After watching the Christmas light, I decided I need to get as far away from the light as possible. But because I'm an idiot, I pretty much did the opposite of that and went to a barren land and found the worst gift of all. You know, I thought this was going to have something to do with the Christmas light somehow, but these are just some stupid Dingo DVD compatibles, aka VCDs. Guess I'm not going to be reviewing the movie that this video is titled after. <laughs> oh, wait. There was another gift under this lovely tree. Aha! Ghostbusters! Faked myself out twice. Let's see what's actually in this bag. Yeah, that's more like it. The Christmas Brigade brings the magic of Christmas to every day of the year. That's right! To every day of the year. Oh, yeah! Uh, yes! This is real! The Christmas Light had a sequel! The Christmas Brigade! This shouldn't exist, yet it does. Or should I say Dio's, stupid Dio's. So, most of the cast returns for the Christmas Brigade, though they couldn't get Dan Haggerty back because he was busy with... Grizzly Mountain, I guess. Go figure. And Jamie Norton is back in the role of a lifetime as Burton. Wait, Jamie Norton? Didn't IMDb say it was Jamie Horton? Both of these movies credit him as Jamie Norton. So either they miscredited him in both movies, or IMDb is sticking Norton's credit on poor Horton when he doesn't deserve it. The company that pops up at the beginning of this tape is New Family Movies instead of Scimitar, but that was just a subdivision of Scimitar. Christmas Brigade came out in 96, only one year after we burnt up in the light, meaning they must have been really rushing this one. But I'm sure they brought their A-game because reassuring remark to set up me getting let down. Yep, that sure is Santa's prison. Let's just sit on that forever. No exaggeration, this opening still shot sits here for 20 seconds before the title even shows up. And then all we do is slowly move into the penitentiary, show Sled 2 taking off, do circles around the prison, then deploy the death bot, which is all recycled animation from the first movie, but with the camera moved. Well, we're certainly wasting a lot of time right away. Good thing we're on extended play. <laughs> Oh, wait. We're not! That's right, they went all out and record this one in standard play, which is pretty much the bare minimum you expect from a retail VHS, so bravo. And yes, you are reading that correctly, and it is no lie. 72 minutes. They went over an hour with this one. And if you're wondering how they came up with enough material to fill a 72-minute runtime when they barely had enough to fill a 23-minute runtime last movie, well, the answer is they didn't. If you think I am going to replace my sled and reindeers with this contraption, you're crazy. Anyway, I guess I replaced them. I'm a giant sack of crap. We see our main Christmas Brigade crew all awkwardly farting around the bridge in silence, and you might notice that they all now have Christmas Brigade assignment patches. Even Santa, who's been kicked back behind a desk for being a loose cannon. Can't help but feel that this was Burton's decision, considering Santa even told told him straight up that he would have murdered him if not for Jennifer intervention last time. I love though that Jennifer's logo is on her pajamas from the last movie. They can give her a logo, but they aren't remodeling her to have more appropriate clothing. This is Captain Burton here of the Christmas Brigade. I'm announcing that for the people who already know that information, I guess. 
Our mission is to patrol the skies above the planet Earth and bring the magic of Christmas to every single day of the year. So you're trying to force aerial creatures to celebrate Christmas every day? Sounds kinda pointless, but so is your existence, so have at it. It's great that within the first minute of the characters actually appearing on screen, we see one of the characters' arms suddenly jump from a normal position to one where they're scratching their butt, I suppose. Hey, Jen, what kind of a girl does a hamburger like? I don't know, Burton. Any kind, as long as she's named Patty. <laughs> it's nice you can hear the actor dying inside for having said that. This is Santa. Come in, Christmas Brigade. <laughs> One thing they have apparently learned how to do in this movie versus the Christmas light is colored lighting for their set, so Santa's office is much more yellow this time. Santa's voice is also changed, so I wouldn't blame you if you didn't notice, because the new guy gives about the same lively performance as the old Christmas light Santa. The Christmas light is strong this year. I can feel it. Can you stop feeling it, Santa? That's disgusting, and I don't want to be ruining any day you had your way with me either. The Christmas light is a light of goodness. One that brightens the whole earth. Wow. The whole earth. Who am I talking to? Why am I doing this? Wow, that empty chair sure is exciting. From here, the whole world looks peaceful. They've got the whole earth in that chair, apparently. I'm getting an emergency transmission. Christmas Brigade Junior Member Pierre Toussaint. Yes, you guys should definitely be doing accents. Now you might think little fake French boy who's standing on the Eiffel Tower to remind you that he's definitely 100% French looks a lot like Jennifer's robot brother, but they are completely different. Pierre has a logo on his shirt. Bonjour, Pierre. Wow, you only said one word yet you managed to murder my language. Impressive. The tower. What's happening now? Christmas Brigade. I think Pierre might be dead. My only regret is not getting to give him a nice room in my facility before he died. You must get there quickly. Sled 2, Christmas light speed, high, now! But not too quickly. We still got a lot of runtime to eat up. Christmas light speed, medium. Hell! The tower is shrinking! X. Go. Santa, say the word and X will destroy him. Go for it. Even I'm not going to stop you this time. X says he's got Pierre. Phew, I'm glad they didn't overexcite us by showing that ball catch the boy and just showed us that chair again. I'm glad I kept faith in the Christmas light. I'm happy for Pierre too, but it was X who saved him, not the Christmas light. Yeah, take that Christmas light! What? Let's all congratulate X. With another round of drinks. We might have lost Pierre. Would you guys stop staring at that stupid empty chair? We need more power. This is my new invention. I need this movie to go faster. This is my new invention, a remote control. Oh, wait, these already existed. I'm an idiot. The power belt. You can go through any physical object. Oh, wow, it lets us be even lazier on animation and just clip through objects. I'm glad you're able to whip these belts up using, I don't know, empty chairs for parts. You can pop out. Or turn invisible or even fly. Wow, every single one of these powers lets you do something lazy with the animation. What a coincidence. The freeze ray. It could backfire, however, and freeze us forever. And we wouldn't want that because then we wouldn't be our usual lively empty chair staring selves. 
Also, they'd move so slowly, no one would probably ever notice that they were frozen. It's always a good feature to add, though, when something might accidentally put you in suspended animation forever. And Burton doesn't think Isaac's designs are crap anymore. He somehow made more sense as a flying evil snowman head. What? It's a shrink wrap. Oops. Sorry, Burton. Now you can comb your hair and tie your shoe at the same time. Yeah, sure, that makes sense, you Frank Conniff wannabe elf pile of garbage. Within seconds of creating these stupid belts, he's horribly disfigured one of his comrades. I think you've locked up the wrong elves, Santa. But I bet there's gonna be a big payoff to this Honey I Shrunk the Burton subplot. He stands on the console for a good chunk of the movie. That is all. We have to be able to trust your devices. You don't trust me. I'm so offended. Just listen to the tone of my voice. Anyway, since you and your dumb devices aren't trustworthy and might accidentally freeze or shrink me, I'll put one on in between shots. Mostly because they can't animate her putting one on. What did the hamburger say to the topping that couldn't keep up? I don't know. Ketchup! <laughs> Burton has a weird burger fetish now? I'm beginning to think that having his brain melted in the last movie... melted his brain. Another brat who's apparently part of Santa's stand around dangerous areas late at night on Christmas Eve group is Jennifer's brother again, but this time they recolored him, so it's truly maximum effort. A strange ship has appeared near the Golden Gate Bridge, Santa. Johnny, I want you to get off the bridge. <laughs> Oh well, at least he was a stupid red shirt. There's the ship, but who's in there? Dr. D is the name. Dr. D? Really? That's it. I'm gonna flag this movie for being inappropriate. Dr. D is the name, and I'm Dr. D. Wow, Dr. D is his name, and he's Dr. D. Thanks for the clarification. I ain't get it first, Big D. This is my ship, the dart. Dr. D in the dart. Don't know why this isn't a Christmas classic. I can't wait to rue the day that Dr. D had his way with me. And this is the transducer reducer. It shrinks things. Oh, what a new invention. Must have taken you a whole later title card to come up with that. I don't just play with my competition. I crush them. Who the hell let you go out in the horribly textured wall spaceship, old man? Seriously, the walls look like a GeoCities page background. I have to go now. My planet needs me. <laughs> Isaac uses his super lazy animation powers to get over and reprimand the old D's pants off. Isaac, what an unexpected surprise. How do you know my name? Why are you doing this? You've made me so angry, I might even stop picking my nose to actually look in your direction. I intend to build a Wonders of the World collection. I intend to shrink and steal everything important to the people of Earth. Oh, the old coot is an alien. He must come from the planet D. You know, D for dinosaur. <laughs> what a great movie that was. Speaking of, the dinosaur I found at a yard sale would fit right into this steaming pile of animation. Now watch as the Big D's arm suddenly springs out and grows. It's not gross or weird, it's just how my species procreates. Well, I'm willing to try anything at least once. Let me show you where I'll put it. Well, I can't take that the wrong way. The Christmas Brigade wants to bring the magic of Christmas to every day of the year. How does Big Dr. D know all these things? Was he watching the movie? Man, he really is bored. I, on the other hand, wish to bring misery to every day of the year. Well, this never-ending scene sure is a good start. To accomplish that, 
You would have to defeat the brigade. I mean, you'd have to murder Jennifer and Burton with SLED 2 self-destruct code that only I know, which I would never give up unless you insisted. Oh, I didn't realize until now that Isaac's head is right at Dr. D's crotch. Yeah. Let me show you where I'll put it. And you will through the day you had your way with me. Do you see that little item floating toward you? It's called a mind cloud. It looks a lot like a halo because that's easier to animate than a cloud, I guess. So now you're dead or under my power, whatever. Do you understand? Yes, master. Whoa, listen to that monotone voice of Isaac. That's so different from the super expressive guy he usually is. The movie might want us to think that Isaac just joined Dr. D now, but why does Dr. D have one of those power belts Isaac supposedly made then? I propose that Isaac was in fact always in league with the D. Dr. D has Isaac. We're worried. Worried that he'll come back. Keep your faith in the Christmas light. Santa, your sad devotion to that Christmas light religion has not helped you conjure up Isaac. I will alert junior brigade members all over the world. Cool, Santa's not going to do anything personally. He's just going to tap more kids to wander out from their homes while praying to a light. Luckily, I guess for Santa, the Flying D decides to just fly right over to his place and do donuts around it because that's apparently irresistible. Isaac, I'm glad you're okay, but what are you doing here? Whoa, can they ease up on the tension a bit, please? The D pops out of the wall, and in Santa's office lighting, we can see that his hair is actually purple. On his ship with the purple lighting, it just made it look like it was gray, so I guess this makes him a bit more alien looking. Dr. Dick tells Santa he's going to put his prison in water and have it suffer shrinkage so that he can play with it later, and Santa is outraged. I cannot let you do that. Well, he'll work his way up to actual outrage. Maybe... One more word, old man, and I will shrink you to the size of a pea. We don't need you making any pea there, D. You can't come in here and... I told you. Don't do this. Ah, I can't believe you did it. The Christmas complex will be ours forever. This will enhance our profit picture. Yeah, this equals profit because... People like models? Maybe you should just try selling some models there, D. This is Jennifer. This is Isaac. Isaac! I'm so glad you're okay. Boisterous and emotional, as usual. <sighs> you don't know her at all. You see, young Jennifer, I have the body of an 18-year-old. If you do, you'd better give it back, because you've ruined it. Sick burn? What was any of that? Here's a thought, though, old man. Maybe not talk about your 18-year-old body to a little girl. Dear, dear, you are cute. Ah, oh, jeez. When does Chris Hansen show up? I love just three things. Money, power, and both. Three things. Money, power, and both. Oh, yeah. I'm going to need to break out the eggnog for this one. Well, I guess you have your standards. They're just low. Ready! But you are a big success at being a complete failure. Shredded Combo! Goodbye, Jennifer. You never were very practical. Whoa, let's not go overboard. There's some things you can never take back, Isaac. We were friends. Goodbye. Isaac? If you ever need a friend, yeah, buy a dog. Did they think the audience would just be doubled over laughing from all this hilarious banter that they'd never noticed that nothing was actually happening in this scene? Or movie, for that matter? Dr. D would be great at acupuncture. He's so good at sticking it to people. They had to know what they were doing, right? Right? There's nothing wrong with him. 
that reincarnation wouldn't cure. So Burton is suggesting murder then, which is awfully rich coming from the guy who got reincarnated as an evil snowman last movie. But I suppose he did get reincarnated again as good Burton, so it's a good plan. It doesn't seem possible that Isaac would do this. Yeah, not given all we know about Isaac, like him trying to murder his competition not once, but twice. Totally out of character. Jen and Burton head over to the prison to tell Santa maybe he should literally fire Isaac, but they can't hear Santa because he's shrunken. I guess he's smaller than shrunken Burton, though you'd think this would be the payoff to Burton having gotten shrunken earlier, but no. I guess there won't be any Christmas this year. We couldn't find Santa for a couple of minutes. All right, call the holiday off. What a great Christmas brigade we are. Why is there a deer head on the prison wall? I thought I was joking when I said Santa took his reindeer out back and retired them last time, but I guess not. Oh, great. I can just see the headlines now. And let's not forget this one. Where's Santa? Oh, what are we going to do? This movie didn't have to be over an hour, guys. It really didn't. There's just so many empty filler shots of nothing. It feels like a rough cut that never should have been seen outside the two people working on it. I have to get them back. A stunning revelation. Just 14 minutes left. Yeah, I wish that's all that was left. How am I going to get down from here? Oops. Oops. I'm okay. I'm okay. Santa Remix! Oops! Oops! I'm okay! I'm okay! Oops! Oops! Help! I didn't realize that the North Pole was actually on the moon. Whoa! Whoa! I am an old man, and I am definitely too old for this. What is that? Just a giant green void in the corner? Yeah, we didn't finish the room, but that's okay as long as we don't show it. Oh, we did show it? Well, whatever. No one's gonna watch this far anyway. But I must shut off the transducer reducer. I sure don't need to be any smaller than I am. Yes, you are a small, petty man, Santa. What was that? Oh good! I'm glad this turned into a horror movie. Now, you stay away from me, you big ugly beast. Indeed, you big ugly movie. My name is Betty, and I always say, life is short, so why not enjoy it? I don't know, Beetle. You really think it's wise to make people question what they're doing with their lives by watching the seemingly never-ending pile of 3D misery? But a Beetle's life is only 21 of your human days. Just 21 days on this good Earth. That is quite interesting, but could you? That seems like a short time to you humans, you know. This is really interesting, but could you? When you've only got 21 days- Oh, you're gonna die soon? So interesting, but could you... Learn how to interrupt me so that there isn't a big awkward pause? When you've only got 21 days on the good earth, there's no time to hurt others, you know? Not true, Beetle. Not true. If these beetles aren't supposed to be the beacon of death, Maybe you should have found another sound effect. Beetles only got, a beetles only got, a beetle only lives, only lives 21 days. This movie feels like it lasts, this movie feels like it lasts, this movie feels like it lasts, like it lasts for 21 days. Only live 21 days. You know, I've always felt like more Christmas movies could use completely sidetracking the plot Beatles singing about how they're gonna die soon. But hey, I guess that is something to look forward to. There's no time for hate. There's no time for war. That's why Beatles never fight. If you live 21 days. Song over? 
No, I didn't cut back to earlier footage. They really just loop the song again. It's almost like this movie's trying to fill in time or something. Anyway, once the song is finally over, the Beatle realizes it's wasted half its life on that stupid song. We don't want to see any children miss Christmas. Well, you're not going to live to see a single Christmas, so you have fun with that. Walking keeps your weight down. Even so, I don't know why I care. Muriel says I walk and talk a lot. I don't talk a lot, do I? I don't think it's true, do you? Don't be shy, tell me. <laughs> I tell you, that beetle can't die soon enough. So after a painfully long discussion about wasting more of the audience's life, the beetle finally flies Santa over to his communicator and we have another long drawn out discussion explaining that, honey, I also shrunk the Santa. This movie acts like even if they show you something, you're too stupid to comprehend it, so they need to explain it to you five times after that. Santa tells Jen and the reformed evil snowman about Dr. Penis's time bomb shrinker that he's left at the prison. The smell of D is monitoring communications and flies back to the polar region as well, begging the question why he didn't just shrink the place when he is there already. Oh wait, I know, say it with me, to waste time. Isaac, shrink the dot and fly right in. Is that? A practical solution? Is that seriously how I'm gonna deliver that line? So Dr. D finally suffers shrinkage. He did it! Let shrink sled to and get in there! You stay out of there unless you've got consent, you freak! <laughs> Is this better or worse than the slow-mo battle with a snowman head in the last one? Well, Dr. Dickles has a death bot of his own, and shockingly, it looks exactly like the Christmas Brigade's death bot. Yeah, them reusing models is a big shock. Anyway, guess what they do? You know, I could have sworn we just saw this scene with the ships. Now things will get interesting. Well, it's nice at least you're gonna try something new, movie. Turn on the death ray. You have a death ray? Yes, it's called pressing play on this movie. We must keep our faith in the Christmas light. We're about to die. We don't have time for your hokey superstitions, old man. Anyway, their new plan of standing there doing nothing but believing in a Christmas decoration earns them being blown from the sky and the prison getting shrunk, including the helipad for Sled 2, which is really cool and not lazy. I wanted to bring the most misery possible to every day of the year. Well, this never-ending scene sure is a good start. Weird. It feels like I said that a lifetime ago. The Christmas light saved us. Just before they fired, I saw a bright light in the sky. Oh, might have been neat if the audience could have seen that too. When the death ray went off, it brought us back to full size. Even though this is way after the death ray went off, and that makes no sense. Anyway, now that they're back to full size, they get shrunk. It keeps going and going and going and going. I'm glad being shrunk and ripped from the ground didn't interrupt Santa's power at the prison. So due to another burger joke, because that's a running gag in this movie for some reason, they're able to fly out of Dr. Dick's cage and put the freeze on him. Which is the abrupt ending to the plot. We don't even see them gloat or put Dr. Grosty into Santa's cell block. And this movie is only about halfway through its 72 minute runtime, so where are they going to fill the rest of it with? Well, don't be too shocked when the answer is pretty much nothing. The movie even acts like it's wrapping things up and it's about to end, then it just keeps going and replays all the classic scenes from the movie over the intro song. The Christmas Brigade brings the magic of Christmas to every day of the year. That's right! Hey, everyone's invited to a Christmas party at the Christmas Complex. Oh boy, I can't wait for this movie to end! Jennifer, 
Who's this with you? This is my sister Amy. She's my clone because lazy, but we didn't give her a power belt because that'd be taking things too far. Amy never talks, but she does sing with Jennifer, and she is apparently voiced by the actress's sister. I guess Jennifer's robot brother really is dead, as that's not him there, it's the phony French boy. And speaking of dead, the Beatles that love singing about their mortality aren't here, so I guess they were on their last day. Aw, that's nice at least. Hi, Amy. I hope you and Amy are going to sing us some Christmas songs, Jennifer. Hi, Amy. I hope you and Amy are going to make my line sound even more awkward, Jennifer. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Joy to the world. So for five minutes straight, we just hang here as the evil clothes run through horrid renditions of Christmas songs, never even cutting back to the rest of the people in the room or showing anything besides these two soulless model copies killing Christmas one lyric at a time. Hey, Santa! How did the Christmas Brigade get started? Well, Pierre, that's an interesting story. I beg to differ. Oh, at the 46 minute mark, we are going to run through the Christmas lights plot for 15 minutes with Santa narrating it instead of Dan Haggerty. Who watches a sequel and says, boy, after this movie's plot is technically done, I sure do hope they run through basically the entire plot of the first one. They don't play any of the audio from the actual movie during this. It's just Santa and Burton talking about it. Back then, Burton was a meanie. Burton got very upset and while ranting and raving, fell into his invention. It was cold in there. And in some cases, it's just them repeating lines they said in the Christmas light, but saying, hey, I said this. I said, if you think I'm going to replace my sled and reindeers with this contraption, you're crazy. There's also long periods of this run through of the first movie where no one is saying anything, it's just playing dinky music over the footage. This movie did not need to be this long. Why would you do this? Why? He then tried to destroy Sled 2. So glad this exists in two versions, neither of which try to make any of it seem exciting in the slightest. But slowly, the Christmas light did its work in him, and he began to melt. This is now a cautionary tale to all your snow people out there. Don't go into the Christmas light. Anyway, if running through the first movie again didn't already drive you nuts, then the movie has the Hell Twins sing songs for another ten minutes. Have I done something? I mean, what? Why? There's no crime that fits this punishment! Alright, that was ten minutes of them singing non-stop, right? It's over? Dashing through the snow and In a one horse Just end! They finally finish off with the intro song, which is the third time this movie has assaulted your ears with this audio trash! That's right! A Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. The Christmas Brigade! Oh, oh yeah, then the intro song finishes you off with its fourth time playing! So yeah, they had about the same amount of material as they did in the Christmas light, which just barely filled 20 minutes and stretched it out to 72. This tape is a Christmas curse. A rattly Christmas curse. If their goal with the sequel is to somehow make the Christmas light look good in comparison, while well, they did accomplish that much, I now love that movie for being short and not having idiots stand around singing forever after the movie's ended. This is the movie equivalent to filling up the pages of your story with a bunch of exclamation marks and stapling some song sheets to the end. But retelling a plot you should probably already know if you're going to watch the sequel, and not even in a recap manner, you're telling it after the sequel 
sequels already played is a great idea. Don't know why more movies don't do that. So stand up and make some awkward movements as I tell you the tale of how I review the Christmas light. I sat on a couch, much like the one I'm on now, mostly because it is the same couch, the stupid free couch that everyone loves. Anyway, the review was the one I did before this. I said stuff like, uh, the 3D is bad and stuff. I'm an idiot. Anyway, to make a long story short, Santa killed me. Or I turned into a snowman for a couple of seconds. I don't know, it wasn't that memorable of a story. Probably shouldn't have told you that. <laughs> What's you all the end about? You truly are the greatest gift of all. No, wait, not you. You are, because you killed Scimitar. Beep.